In this video, we're going to focus on the pinnacle rearrangement reaction. In this reaction, we're going to convert a 1,2-diol into a ketone. So here we have 2,3-dimethylbutane, 2,3-diol as our starting reactant. And we're going to react it with sulfuric acid, and we're going to heat the solution. So we can put H plus to represent sulfuric acid. Right now, the alcohol is the bad leaving group. But once we protonate it, we could turn it into a better leaving group. Now, both of these alcohols, they're both tertiary alcohols, so it doesn't really matter which one uh, we choose to react with the acid. But let's start with the first one. So the first step is protonation. We're going to convert the OH group from being a poor leaving group to a better leaving group. So now water is going to leave and we're going to get a tertiary carbocation. Now, in most other organic reactions, when you have a tertiary carbocation, you typically don't have any other rearrangements because tertiary carbocations tend to be quite stable relative to primary and secondary carbocations. However, we can form a more stable carbocation in this example due to the presence of the oxygen. And so we're going to get a rearrangement reaction. Now, this carbon here has four bonds. There's no hydrogen atoms on that carbon. So we can't get a hydride shift. However, what we can get is a methyl shift. So this methyl group is going to move towards the carbocation. And here it is right here. This carbon lost the bond so it's going to have a positive charge. So notice that we have a secondary carbocation, which may appear to be less stable than the tertiary carbocation. Now this secondary carbocation is going to be stabilized by resonance. The oxygen with a lone pair, it can take that lone pair, use it to form a pi bond, converting it into a protonated ketone. So this is what we now have. In the next step, we could use a base to remove this hydrogen, giving us our final product, which is a ketone. So this particular ketone has the name pina cologne. So that's the pinnacle rearrangement reaction. It converts 1,2-diols into ketone by means of an acid catalyst. Now let's work on some other example problems. So here we have another 1,2-diol, and using an acid catalyst, it's going to form these two products. So here's one type of ketone that can be formed with a six-membered ring, and here's another ketone that can form as well, but this one is going to have a five-carbon ring go ahead and propose a mechanism for the conversion of this particular diol into those two ketones. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. So let's begin by getting the six carbon ring. Let's start with that mechanism. Now due to symmetry, we can protonate any one of the two hydroxyl groups. So it really doesn't matter which one we start with initially. So 
So like before, the first step is going to be pronation. We're going to convert the hydroxyl group from a poor leaving group to a better leaving group. After pronation, this is going to behave like an S1 reaction. The leaving group is going to leave. So now we have a tertiary carbocation adjacent to a hydroxyl group. So we're going to get a rearrangement. The driving force is carbocation stability. If a carbocation can form a more stable intermediate, it's going to do it. So this methyl group is going to move towards the carbocation. So now all we have is the hydroxyl group on this carbon, and on the other carbon we have two methyl groups. But we have the plus charge on that carbon with the hydroxyl group. In the next step, we're going to donate a pair of electrons to form a pi bond, converting the hydroxyl group into a ketone, a protonated ketone. And then in the final step of this mechanism, we're going to use a weak base to remove the proton. A protonated ketone is a strong acid. It's highly acidic. I believe the pKa for that might be around negative 6 or negative 7. So it's very easy to remove this proton. And so we get this product. So that's how we can show the mechanism for the conversion of this diol into this particular ketone. Now let's propose a mechanism for the conversion of this reactant into the second product. If you want to pause the video to try that, feel free to do so. Now the first step is not going to change. We're going to protonate the hydroxy group with H+, just like before. I guess I could have kept that instead of deleting the whole thing, but no worries, we'll work this through. Now just like in a previous mechanism, the leaving group is going to leave. And we're going to get a tertiary carbocation. Now this is the part where we have to be careful because the kind of rearrangement that we're going to get will determine what kind of product will be at the end. So last time we did a methyl shift. This time we need to do a ring contraction in order to go from a 6 carbon ring to a 5 carbon ring. The question is, how are we going to do that? What bond do we need to break? Last time we broke this particular carbon-carbon bond. This time we need to do something else. We need to break this bond here. The electrons that are part of that bond that connect these two carbon atoms, we're going to take those electrons and they're going to move towards this carbo, that carbocation. So let's number the carbons here. Let's call this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So what we're doing right now is we're breaking the bond between carbons 5 and 6. We're going to use those electrons in that bond to connect carbons 5 and 1. When carbons 5 and 1 connect, we're going to get a 5-carbon ring. So let's begin by drawing a 5-carbon ring and then we'll talk about it. Now, 
carbon 1 has a methyl group. So I want this to be carbon 1 because we have a methyl group here. We can make this number 2, 3, 4, and 5. So carbon 1 has a, a methyl group. Carbon 1 gained a bond, so it's not going to have the plus charge. Carbon 5, it lost the bond, but it got it back, so it's not going to have the plus charge. Carbon 6, it lost the bond, it didn't get it back, so carbon 6 will have the plus charge. Carbon 6, it's no longer connected to carbon 5 because we severed the bond between carbons 5 and 6. However, carbon 6 is still attached to carbon 1 because this bond did not participate in this particular reaction step. So we broke the bonds between carbons 5 and 6, but not between carbons 1 and 6. So carbon 1 is still connected to carbon 6. And carbon 6 has a methyl group. So this right here is carbon 6. We broke the bond between 5 and 6, but carbon 6 is still attached to carbon 1. And carbon 1 has a methyl group and carbon 6, which we could see that here. So it's very helpful to number everything so after the ring contraction, you know exactly where all the atoms should be and also which atom has the positive charge. Carbon 6 lost the bond and it didn't get it back, so carbon 6 is going to have the positive charge. Now carbon 6 also have the hydroxyl group. So we can put the OH group there. Now you might be wondering, isn't six carbon rings more stable than five carbon rings? Because whenever you have a six carbon ring, you virtually have almost zero to little to zero uh, ring strain or angle strain. So in terms of angle strain, six carbon rings are more stable than five carbon rings. So how is it that we went from a more stable ring structure to a less stable ring structure? It's important to understand that the stability of both of these rings, they're very close, they're both relatively stable, even though this one is more stable. The driving force for this ring contraction has to do with forming a more stable carbocation. Here we have a tertiary carbocation, but that carbocation is not stabilized by resonance. Here we have a secondary carbocation, but this one is stabilized by the hydroxyl group. We can put the plus charge on the oxygen as opposed to the carbon, and that increased stability more than compensates for the decreased instability as we go from a six carbon ring to a five carbon ring. So even though we have a ring contraction in this example, which we lose some stability, we gain a lot more stability in the structure if we could put the plus charge on the oxygen. And that's the driving force for, this, for these rearrangements that we're getting here. So now we're going to take a lone pair from the hydroxyl group and we're going to form a pi bond. Let's see if I can fit this here. Let's not forget about that methyl group. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to use a base to remove this proton. And I am running out of space. So that will give us our final product, which is a ketone. So this reaction illustrates a situation where we can get a ring contraction. Even though we lose some stability by going from a six carbon ring to a five carbon ring, we gain carbocation stability if we could put the plus charge on an oxygen as opposed to a carbon. Even though oxygen is more electronegative, when we put the plus charge on the oxygen, the octet rule 
is satisfied. When the plus charge is on the carbon, we have an empty p orbital. Carbon doesn't have all eight electrons that it desires, so it's not being the octet rule. And so putting the plus charge on the oxygen is better than having on a carbon because at least the octet rule is being obeyed. Oxygen will have eight electrons, whereas carbon will have only six. So that increased stability gives us the driving force for this ring contraction to happen.